broken. Okay. <laughs> no, now you need a new one, otherwise you're lame. Uh, okay. So over the next couple days, we'll go through your shooting kind of piece by piece. Most of you guys have done a class with me before, right? Mm -hmm. Most of you, yes. I you individually, know. no. But as a group, yes. Uh, all right. So we've got up here on this bay, we're just going to be running drills. We have a stage down there that's just meant to be like a plain vanilla USPSA looking stage. We're going to shoot the stage cold in the morning so you can see your cold shooting. That's important that we get to see that. And then we'll start working through drills. Our focus is going to be on dynamic shooting because, you know, it's supposed to be a more advanced class. We'll do a little bit of fundamentals and then we'll get right into shooting and moving. And that'll be the focus for most of it. We'll do some target transition stuff. For every, for every exercise we do, it's going to be hyper-focused. It'll be, hey, focus on just this one element. And then as far as me giving feedback, that, that'll be what I focus on. So if we're doing target transitions, for example, I'm just going to watch how the gun goes between targets and make sure you're applying the, uh, the right concepts. But I won't criticize how fast you draw. Does that make sense? It'll just be focused. Just, just we're working on just this thing. The reason that is is because you can uh, consciously think about one, one piece of your shooting at a time. Everything else, you'll just do what you've trained to do. You'll revert to your habit, but you can consciously affect one piece at a time. And then we'll just switch around what that piece is gonna be. Uh, the good thing about that is you'll understand how to change parts of your shooting, but then the thing to understand is if you're not consciously thinking about it, it's just gonna revert to its habit. You know, like nothing, nothing fundamentally is gonna change with you in two days. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, but you'll get a good sense of what you need to do moving forward, how you need to practice. A couple of guys got on the program. Alex, you got on the program for practicing mm -hmm. for a year. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful for you? Yes, very helpful. Yes. So if you get on the program, like you will improve. Yeah. But this is more about what you do when you leave here. That's more my focus. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. As far as um, safety stuff, the stage will be just a, just like a USPSA stage. So one dude on a timer, one guy shooting. When you're finished, unload, run it just like a stage. Up here on the drills will be different. It'll be either hot or cold range. So it'll be, all right, hey, make ready. And then everybody who's going to shoot, they load up. And then you'll just get start signals, beep, 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 and do a lot of repetition. In between reps, just reload if you have to. Holster up, get ready to go again. If you need to handle your gun for any other reason, that's fine. You don't even need to ask. Just draw your gun like, hey, I need to check my dot or look at something. I, I don't want you to ask. It just slows shit down. Uh, as long as it's safe to do so, you can handle your gun. But then when we're done doing reps on the drill, all right, everybody unload. We'll unload together, make sure everything's safe, and then, then we'll go down and check out the targets. Does that work for everyone? Mm -hmm. We'll take a break around the middle of the day for lunch. We probably will be done shooting around 3.30-ish, I would guess, based on the last few days. Mm -hmm. uh, and how much ammo did everybody bring? Like about a 1,000? Yeah, so we'll be shooting about 500 rounds a day, doing a bunch of dry fire. You should be pretty tired when you leave. All right, any questions? All right, let's go uh, to the stage. A little bit of marksmanship fundamentals. Boo. Boo, I know, I know. Just a quick assessment of our grips. Should be helpful. So I'm going to start. Loaded hold for the course. At the tone, draw my gun. No time limit for this part. I really don't care how long the draw takes. I'll line up my red dot on the white spot, and then I'm going to fire a pair of shots. Then I'll let everything settle down and do it again for a total of four pairs. idea this is our exercise uh, come on up here let's talk about what's likely to go wrong so most common issues are going to be this low and left stuff what's causing this hand tension, hand tension yeah so basically down. like i'm doing that with my firing hand and also you might look at this and be like yeah that's a good result like they're all in the a zone tight the result is good but i don't really care about that i want it, i want it to be like perfect i'm literally i'm like really want to hit the white spot with every bullet that comes out of the gun so that's why i want you to be this critical with yourself anyway low and left stuff like i'm doing that with my hand i'm pushing on the gun mashing into it um 
This one especially, I saw the dot flick down left and I could feel like, yep, I pushed down into the gun. And as I'm shooting this drill, I'm gonna be paying attention to my hand and trying to hold that as still as possible. The stuff that's going up high, what's usually causing that is I'm focused on the red dot rather than on this white spot. Now, I put down the white spot to give you something to focus on to try to eliminate that so you'll learn the value of looking at a small spot on the target. But really that's the issue is if you focus there, you're gonna be putting, like bringing the gun back on, onto this, the white spot, you know, in between shots. What you don't wanna do is drive the gun down or push the gun down. What's gonna happen if you're, you're pushing on the gun aggressively? Yeah, it's gonna hit all down here. Another good advantage of having this white spot here is it gives you a reference point so you can really see how your sight moves against it. So it's like, I want my, I want this white spot to be here and my dot to bounce off of it really predictably. There's a, and I never see it slash down below that spot. And I never see it like kind of like wiggle over to the left because I'd be doing that with this hand. And that's it. That's the whole drill. I'm going to be shooting those rapid fire players, paying attention to my hands. Okay. Obviously. When you're doing this drill, you're gonna get a, get a lot of uh, value with your grip. You're gonna like learn how to grip the gun. Okay, does this make sense to everybody? Yeah. All right, we'll start uh, getting after it. For you guys, of uh, our exercise that we're gonna do here, we're gonna be doing, this is gonna look like a movement thing. It's really not a movement thing. I wanna focus on the shooting part. So watch what I'm doing with my head and the gun. Like I said, I'll make a couple examples. Ah, it's technology. I'm going to do it the wrong way, so pay attention to my head's relationship with the gun. What did you notice that was different there? Yes, I was connected to the tube, and that's no bueno. That's really what we don't want. So let's think of this as a vision exercise. That's really what it is. I'm going to be shooting two rounds on each of these targets, left target from the left side, right target from the right side, the other two as I move between. The barrels are just here as vision barriers. So I want you to look for that white spot on the target, but the barrels are here to fuck you up. Like that's the whole point. Now, should the barrel ever appear clear to me? No. No, because I'm looking through it. I'm like, I'm looking, I know there's something back there that I want to shoot. Okay. And I'm going to be looking for that spot when I see red flash on it. I'm going to be firing up that predictive shoot and aggressive pair like we were just doing. Uh, the big thing that people will end up doing to some degree or another is like I, I made it real obvious the last time I stayed connected to that tube. And you could see that just slowed everything down, right? It was a second slower to shoot. Okay. Does this make sense to everyone? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. We're going to have two copies of it shooting at a time, making sure you're not tracking your sight. Instead, you're tracking the ace on, on the target. As I shoot this again, just come on over on the side where you can see what's going on. Um, watch my gun, and I want you to tell me like when I start shooting on each target. Like how how much time the gun is there for. It. What did you notice? Like how much time was the gun there for? Fired? Not much. Yes, most of you, I'd say you're burning up time on this doing over confirmation. Okay? Yeah. So the way that looks, like I'll start with the gun down at a 45 degree angle. At the tone, I'll bring the gun up and fire a shot. Okay, that was point eight. All I was looking for there was my dot looks like a dot. Now I'll react to red. That was point five four. That's cut off two cents of a second and then some. Okay, that's the big thing is I want you reacting to the color red. Now, as we get going faster and faster, you're gonna tense up in your shoulders. Probably a lot of you noticed when you went through this, you'd be looking for that spot, then the gun would come over and you'd see the dot wiggling around on it. That's when you're too tense or you're not being precise with your eyes. I'll, I'll show you what we're gonna do for that. 
I'm going to fire only the first and last shot of the drill. Every other shot, I'm just going to play with the trigger. Now, if I inadvertently fire that shot, I'm wearing hearing protection on a shooting range and the bullet will go through a target. So, like, that's not really a big deal. All I want is that you fire the first and last shot and you move through the center aggressively. I'll, I'll make a couple examples for you so you'll see. <laughs> you look look at me. I mean, I exaggerate it, but you'll see, like, if you tense up your shoulders and you're yeah. ripping the gun through, you're going to see, like, you're looking at a spot, like, the red dock, like, like, all that. We don't want that. What's the fix? Relax. Relax, Relax shoulders. your shoulders. Look where you want to go. Now, we can start calling off times for this. What do you reckon a good time is? Like, three seconds? Under three is very quick. Yeah. Like, the, the demo run I did, I think, was three and a half. I'll really, I'll try to shoot this at, like as hard as I can go. That's 285, and that's that's moving. But you can see the shooting part wasn't really that unrealistic. No. The hard part is I have to walk fast to open up the targets and and like walk through the drill really fast without tensing up my upper body. You know, that's mm -hmm. very challenging for people to do. But if you do it, like, you can shoot this really aggressively. With, uh, yeah, I mean, that was all is. It's good, okay? Does it make sense? So we'll go through just one shot, one shot variation, run everybody through that, and you'll see, like, how your dot's moving through the middle. That's kind of the key. And then we'll go through again shooting it really aggressively. Okay. The skill sets we worked on this morning was two things, like gripping the gun properly, looking at a spot, and then we did tracking that spot while you had vision barriers kind of basically fucking with you. They're just in the way. Okay. What percentage of USPSA do you think those skill sets cover? 90%. Yeah, it's like that's most of what you're doing on most stages kind of look like that where you're like shooting and you're just kind of walking through the stage and your know, targets appear and disappear and you're picking them out and shooting. Yes, that's a very big part of what you do in USPSA. Those white spots you put on the targets, how much did those help? Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Now, obviously you can't do that. Well, I, I should, I'll take that back. What, you got two options. Before you shoot a stage, you have your buddy go and just peel back a paster in the center of the target like that. <laughs> That's not, that's kind of dirty. So no, you're going to have to, you're going to have to train to sort of like project that spot on there or pick a spot on the target. It's like for me, 50% or 60% of the walkthrough, I'm walking through there, just looking at spots like that spot, that spot, that little mark on the popper, that little thing. Like I'm looking at those spots, my eye's going to grab and I just go through the stage and shoot those spots. All right. It's a, it's a big part of shooting that you do that. And of course, the stuff we did with the grip, getting your grip balanced where you're holding the gun, crushing it with your support hand so it's going to act predictably, and then just not putting up unnecessary inputs on it, uh, reacting to the recoil. That's that's pretty much it. So simple, simple drills, but very important skills, yeah? yeah? Okay, I think it's a good time to eat lunch, and then we'll we'll carry on. All right. Dude, I want to take this off. Oh, it's too hot. Ooh, this and is I'm getting. I'm gonna let the hair flow for this one. Okay, so as okay, there's there's a time thing. To... Okay, so this drill, we're gonna combine a lot of the elements we were just doing. So picking out a spot, the tracking component, so like looking through a wall for where you believe the target to be, and then we're gonna add in the tension component and a stance component. Oh, it's a lot. I'll show you. 
I'm going to start left side of the barrels, engage the steel, move to the right, paper, steel, paper, back to the left, steel. Here we go. A lot happening in seven rounds here, a lot. So let me talk you through it. First, the obvious stuff, grip and picking up spots. That's always what we need to do. You'll notice I'm gonna hit where I'm looking as long as I'm careful to pick out that spot. Now I said stance is a big deal on this, okay? When you stop, it should be feet spread apart, knees bent, ready to move, like 50-50 weight distribution. This should be my habit. I stop like this, I'm ready to cut any direction I have to, like this should be the habit. We're gonna be checking that here because you'll come over here and you know what dudes like to do. They'll be doing this kind of a thing and then it's time to move out. That won't work. Okay, so you're gonna be making sure you stop feet spread apart, knees bent. Now you'll also notice the transitions are wider here. It's almost 90 degrees. You'll be backing out of here then the next target's over here, right? If there's tension in your shoulders or tension in your upper body as you're trying to like push the gun around, this is just gonna make it worse. Right, so the same thing you were experiencing when we were shooting more straight down range, it's just going to be harder here. You've got to stay loose and let your eyes, uh, you know, drive around to where the gun is. Okay. One thing I'm looking for here, watch my eyes in the gun. Watch where my eyes go. Target, target to where I think it is. Target, look over to here. Target, look over here. Target, look over here. You know, you did not see a hand come off the gun when I shot it live. Maybe the gun dropped down for a hair, but it never came, the hand never came off. And I was more or less had the gun mounted, looking to put it together with a target. Like that's what I want to see. Like, just think your eyes go from targets to targets. I'm only ever looking for targets, but okay. with this much movement, you, you're, you'll, have, you'll find yourself like looking at the ground or a lot of times you'll see people move over here, just kind of looking at nothing. And then they're too late to put the gun up here. Does that make sense? So like be very deliberate, look for the target or where you think it is always, okay? Does this drill make sense to everybody? Yep. This is just hard. There's just a lot happening here in seven rounds, for real. Okay. So uh, there's gonna be some bullying. I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the way we'll do it, you'll shoot up here, you can go down there, dry run it, live run it, it's your ammo. And we'll just kind of rotate until you guys get sick of doing this drill, okay? All right, another drill, guys. We're gonna be working on target transitions here. This drill is like, uh, I would say it's a good assessment tool for your target transitions. This isn't so much an exercise to build skill, but it will reveal it. All right, let me make a little example for you. So it'll be steel, paper, steel, paper, steel, paper, steel. back and forth, and then finishing on the steel. Okay, a lot of target transitions going on here. So the idea is you set it up intentionally so the targets are different distance and difficulty. There's different degrees of swing between the targets. Okay, and that's intentional. We're going to shoot this and see which type of target transitions you have a problem with. So there's some possibilities that are going to happen. There's some some different areas where people have issues. When the targets are close together, it is much more difficult for you to pick out spots on the target and have your gun come to you. Why? Because the red dot is always in your vision. You know what I mean? So it's like if I'm shooting a plate rack straight down range, the gun goes up and recoil, but I see the dot the whole time and it's easy for that to grab my attention as it was I should be looking for a spot on the next plate. So when the targets are close together, that can be an issue. On these wider swings, notice that will not be an issue. Why is that? Because your dot comes out of your vision, yeah, right? Yeah, my head's coming off the dot. Yeah. So that's going to, again, that helps you pick out, like, hey, is that a problem? Is it not? Some guys have a problem picking out a specific spot on the partial targets or switching to reactive shooting. You notice that the target back there, it was dot, press, dot, press. I didn't just see the red dot flash and then hammer it with two shots. So I addressed that target differently. So we'll see, do you have a problem changing the way that you're addressing these targets with a different level of confirmation or maybe the aiming scheme you use? However you want to think about it. Good, what other problems might you have? Drag-ons, drag-offs. Yes, yeah, so on the closer, faster targets, typically 
people get lazy with their vision. So you're thinking, hey, I want to shoot this target really fast. And you just end up red touches brown and boom, you're on the trigger rather than picking out a spot. I'm sure you've been experiencing that down on the stage because it's the targets are pretty close. Right? There's a lot of things that can happen. As you shoot this drill, you might get sucked onto the tube and start tracking through there. Whatever. As we shoot this, you're gonna you're gonna see like what you're having a problem with with your target transitions, and then we drill that thing more specifically. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Yeah. Any questions? All right, let's get to it. Two up at a time. Examples for you. Are you videoing already? Yeah. One will be good. I'll keep my language. One will be bad, <laughs> as usual. All right. I'm gonna start feet spread apart, knees bent. At the tone, engage each target from each side of the stick. That was pretty lame, right? That looked great. It was super lame. That's so how I, I would do it. There was two things I really don't like. I would say coloring inside the lines with my shooting, which is like dot comes down, looks like a dot, then press. Dot comes down, looks like a dot, then press. And you notice I got really tucked into my stance before I was comfortable shooting again. Instead, what I'd like to see is a more dynamic style where you're you're moving as you're shooting a little bit and you're reacting to the red, just the flash of red. Does that make sense? That's, that's more what I'm looking for. So the point of this exercise is a couple things. First, we got to start ingraining stance. So remember yesterday we were working on stance a lot where, hey, you want to stop feet spread apart, knees bent like this, like that should be your habit, All right? So it was good. It's good on the stage. Why? Because you're ready to move. Yeah, you're like, you, you get in a position, it's like you can move out of there with power. If I stop like this and I try to move, then I have to like kind of lower my weight down, kick my, kick my foot out, and then I take off. And you'll do that subconsciously. It just adds time. It just stacks up time, okay? Instead, yeah, I want to get into a stance I'm ready to move out of. The other thing we're doing here is disconnecting your upper body like you're shooting from your lower body. And what I mean there is you're going to come into position or roll out of position, whatever, and you see the sight flashing where you want, you just react to what you see. Most people, either consciously or unconsciously, they're going to tie their shooting to what their feet are doing. They'll be like, yeah, I'm going to stop and then shoot or something like that. And you don't want that. It's totally independent. It's like, Sight looks good, start shooting. It doesn't matter what's happening down here. It doesn't matter if I'm off balance and fucked up. It's like, if the sight's looking good for the target, I want to react to that and start shooting. So that's that's kind of the idea here. So, so uh, we're starting to move as soon as we get the first shot. Uh, well, now here's the complicated part. We're going to change the distance of this. Okay. So we'll do it five yards, three yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, whatever. And it's going to be different based on different situations. And you'll get to a point where you want to shoot and then just snap you're not going to try to shoot dynamically yeah. but yeah so it's it's like you can't you don't tie it to it's not like shoot then start moving then keep shooting something like that i want it to be really fluid looking does that make sense and it, it works at any distance that type of thing and you'll change what you're doing a little bit based on the distance and ben yes, is sir. the stick a fault line <laughs> no no that's the, the stick is a contrivance to force you to move around we're not like looking here to like stack up foot fault penalties like you wouldn't imagine. That's not really the idea. All right, so this drill is complicated. People, you should dry fire it because for whatever reason, you'll see dudes do this. They'll be like, boom, 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 boom. Just I one rep, you're like, that's not the drill, man. Guys get fucking weird on this. So we had to dry fire to make sure you understand it. And then we can shoot it live. Okay, questions? Don't look like you're stuck in the mud. Yeah, don't look like you're stuck in the mud. Alright, I'll make two examples for you. So when I'm up close, it's gonna I will feel like hey I gotta go fast, all of that. Notice I tensed up and it was like not very fluid. It's not really what we want. But when people are up close on the targets, that's what they tend to do. They're just gonna like tense up everything. Instead, I wanna stay loose and try to be fluid. See the difference? Like in terms of, in terms of style, it's way different. I'm, 
I'm staying loose, but the shooting's happening a lot faster. And that's very challenging for people to do. But that's that's why we're shooting up close like this, is to try to stay relaxed. Okay? Should we try it again? Yep. Try it with uh, all of you? Let's do it. <laughs> we're gonna do wide transitions here, guys. So as you can see, my the targets I'll be shooting is these these straight down range of the seal and these targets off at a 90 degree angle. I don't really care which order you do. The only direction you want. Now, the normal advice that I give is, hey, look at a spot, let the gun come to you. Look at a spot, let the gun come to you. Don't push it around. Now here with the target spread out a little more widely, how does that look to you? Look at a spot, don't push the gun. Now it looks pretty obvious, it's like, hey, there's, you need to get a little more speed there, right? On the wide transition. Yeah, on the wider transition. So what I want is you're going to push the gun into your vision. When you see the gun coming out of the corner of your eye, you just relax. So you kind of push, then relax, and then, then let the gun settle. So that speed looks like this. See that the gun snaps mm -hmm. towards the steel. I see it coming. Then I just relax and let it finish up in my vision. All right? That's what I want. Some live ammo going. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, like, it, again, I felt very, very slow. Like, I was being very patient. I'm looking at the steel. Just wait, wait, wait. I see the gun coming. Relax. It comes into my vision. And then I start shooting. Okay? Intellectually, this is easy to understand what to do here. It's just hard to do it. The, 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 the places where people have problems is one, is managing the amount of tension in their body. So typically when people tense up to push the gun, they're just gonna hold that tension. So it's really common that somebody will transition over to here and then they'll be, they'll be tense still and they'll push the gun into the next target, all right? So like changing the level of tension in your body is really hard to do, right while you're shooting. So again, you gotta make sure you relax and release that tension, otherwise your, your transitions will be very imprecise. And that's why I put the target close to this one intentionally to try to fuck you up on that, because that, that will happen. Another thing you'll, you'll have happen, you'll see the gun coming out of the corner of your eye, and then where do you want your vision, where will your vision go then? Yeah, you'll be like, you'll see the gun coming, you'll see the red dot mm -hmm. in the corner of your eye, then your vision goes on there, and then you'll be, hunting around again. So that'll be the common areas where you get tripped up and we're going to try to avoid that. Okay? Does this make sense to everybody though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've got it set up times two. We don't have to move anymore. So it should be more pleasant to shoot. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. Like I said, two examples. One will be good. One will be not so good. I'm good, Ben. The other way. He's easy. He's an easy person to hand. What differences did you note there between those two styles? You started shooting way too soon and you had to walk all the way in. Yes. So the first thing is what I want. Yeah. yeah. The second thing is what people tend to do. So the, the way, what I want is that you're going to move from one spot to the other, nice and aggressively. Okay, a couple steps before you get to where you're trying to go. I understand it's fun and all that shit, but a couple steps there before I, I get past the barrels, I'm gonna now start doing the thing we were doing in the show yesterday. It's like, yeah, there's a target there, I think it's there, or I can see it or whatever. You gotta be able to see it. I'm gonna look to that spot and start tracking that spot. What's the gun gonna do? Come up, come up to my vision, that's right. And I'm gonna step into position while I'm shooting, okay? And yet, the way that you think about it is like, I'm going from there to there as fast as I can. I'm gonna slow down and stop properly. And if I get an opportunity to shoot early in there, like I'll be looking at a target and I'm just gonna read what the dot tells me. That's what, the way I wanna think about it. Okay. If I get the opportunity. Yes, it's like, I'm going, I'm cooking over there. You know, I'm cooking over there. And I'm just going to slow myself down, stabilize myself, down, and then start shooting when the sight tells me. 
as opposed to people are like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot while I move, right? And then, then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm saving time. So I get the gun up, then I'll shoot this one nice and early. Oh, I gotta stabilize here. Then they stabilize, and then they're then they're comfortable to continue shooting. That's not what I want. I want you to, to move in there aggressively and get to stability. Start shooting when the sights tell you. Don't slow down your movement to artificially create an opportunity to shoot on the move that's not really there. Make sense to everybody? Yes. The hard thing to do for people is to shoot into that stance. Like that's why we did the shoot with the stick this morning. It's a big, it's a very unnatural thing to be shooting while you're still moving and then stop properly. It's, it, it takes a lot of training. Okay. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. We're gonna have, obviously, you guys go two directions. One, 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 of, out. one thing that you shared with me at one point on this drill yes. was just as important as the time getting in here is the time between this target yeah, and so that, that target. Yeah, so that'd be how we measure it. Yeah. So it's like, that's why that the second example I did over there, where I came in, I shot, and then I stabilized, and then I shot the plate. Like, that's how you, if you're, if you want the, if the transition from the, the, the paper to the plate, like if you see that that's disrupted by your movement, like that's a problem, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you, like the ideal for me is, I'm gonna roll into position and shoot this set of targets at the same time, or it'll look the same to me just standing here drawing and shooting them. Does that make sense? Like yeah. that's where I wanna be as far as the skill level, which is very hard to do, because you'd be moving in. Any questions? All right, let's walk through it, then we'll start shooting. It doesn't like the bands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to roll out of position now, a little bit the opposite of what we were just doing. Now, I'm going to shoot, again, rolling out of position. I want you to notice how subtle it is. It's not much that I'm doing, okay? And this is what I want. You don't have to shoot on the move properly. I just want you to roll out. Okay, so what did you notice there? You started rolling out on the open yeah, target. So, yeah, I rolled out a little. I uh, moved my eyes off that one early. I'll go this direction. Then I should not have moved my eyes off that early. Right, it doesn't look like much. It's like that drill we were doing with the stick, stepping over it this morning. It's like I'm just destabilizing myself. I think of like letting myself fall in this direction. That's enough to get my center of gravity started in the direction I want to go. Now I don't want to do a bunch of extra stuff, so watch, watch how much my uh, stance gets disrupted when I pick this foot up. Or if I think about initiating movement from my feet, it always moves the gun around. So that's why I want to be gentle, subtle, like just start to fall in the direction I want to go, you know? And I'm still shooting the same way. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to let you finish, I'm sorry. Yes. So in a match, if I saw this. You would just shoot on the move? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Right, right. but yeah. you can't, it's not always an option right. and you don't usually, so yeah. the, the reason it's set up like this is because I can't set the scenario up right, right. that it would be this for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Right, so this is just a skill, it's not a scenario that you're going to gotcha. apply necessarily. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So think if it's like, I'm shooting three long targets, and then I'm going to roll out on a close, whatever. Like, whatever, however you define that to you, it'd be the way, this would be the way you do it. Okay? Alright, now the hard part about this is the psychological part. When you're shooting this target, especially, I mean, the no shoots on that one for a reason to make it harder, right? But when you're shooting the target and you're off balance and falling, it'll it'll make you shoot faster. It'll make you start following your dot. It'll make you like you'll fire one shot and pull the gun. It's gonna be like boom, boom, like that because you feel uncomfortable and you want to get the shots out of the gun. The idea is you don't do those things. You just relax and just follow the same marksmanship rules while you're shooting, even though you're off balance. That's the hard thing to do. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so we're gonna try to work through that. Let's uh, let's pace these up. Anyway, like I said, this drill eats up ammo and is fucking weird, but it's good. There's good value. 
So normally when we do target transitions, you look at a spot, wait for the sight to come to you, then you pull the trigger when you see what you're supposed to, right? Yes. That's the normal thing. Yes. We're going to reverse that relationship now. So now it's like you will pull the trigger when you're supposed to, unless like a small child runs in front of you. You will pull the trigger when you're supposed to, okay? And your job is to get your vision and the gun to where it's supposed to be, okay? Yes, you will shoot in a cadence, but it's like, that's what people don't get. Like, they're, like you're gonna have to consciously be in control of your finger. That's the only job your brain can do. Otherwise, you're just gonna revert to your training, which would be like, see it, like look at a spot, the gun will come to you and then you'll react visually to what you see. Like, I don't want that. It's like, you have to shoot to a cadence, okay? So, I'm gonna shoot to an even cadence. Boom, 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 boom. The whole point is, I'm not gonna be able to hear the target transition. Then I'm gonna speed up and get to the point where I start making little errors and then I work there. I'll, I'll show you. Now I'm gonna start slow and work it up. very slow to begin with mm -hmm. that's what I want you to do then we'll start uh, speeding it up okay. eventually you'll get to where you're going just about as fast as you can pull the trigger and this will be fun Quick, what did I do wrong here? Over. Over. Right. So, right. So, because I have to go faster, now I have to, like, I have to push the gun a little bit. Right? That's just physics, right? And now I just, I just threw the gun too far. So, I'm going to keep, I'll keep working on that. You get the idea? It's like, I, that's what I'm going to try to work through. Um, what people get out of this drill, like once you get going fast, you're, you're, in a way your vision is going to catch up with what you're doing. Like you'll be looking at a spot on the target, the outline of the gun will come there and you'll shoot and you'll be like, fuck, the bullets are right on top of each other, but you're not seeing that much off your sights. It's going to be weird, but it's going to show you how aggressively you can shoot target focus. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. So your vision will catch up with what you're actually doing. Okay. Any questions? What are we expecting to see as far as errors? It'll be streaking hits through the middle, especially, because you got to grab spots with your eyes, so it'll be a lot of hits peripherally. And uh, typically, the last target you shoot is the hardest one. Why is that? Because you're going to start kind of oriented towards this target here, and by the time you get to the fourth one, it's like you weren't really set up and oriented to it. So your, your eyes actually have to get in front of you and grab spots on it. So it's hard for people to do. Three strikes. No, it'll be a fucking, it'll be all the ammo you want to use. Oh, you can just, just bang it up. Alright, let's face this up and get going.